Hi everyone, this is Eugene Lee Show, and today I'd like to talk to you about the new Point Cloud Viewer that's uh, just been released from Alice Labs. A little bird told me that uh, this was uh, available, and I'm actually quite excited about it uh, because it's a free Point Cloud Viewer, and it's something that you can send to people. They can install on their computers, and you can send them Point Clouds and projects, and they can also import uh, different uh, file formats of Point Clouds for viewing on their PCs. So this is actually a really, really nice tool that's uh, being offered by Alice Labs and uh, a little bit excited about it. So today what I want to do is uh, show you a little bit about it. I'm just going to reset my screen here. If you are a Studio Clouds user, this will be very, very familiar because it looks like it's just uh, a tuned down version of Studio Clouds that doesn't have all the options. But they they have left a whole bunch of things in here that are actually going to be quite useful to, I think, to a lot of people. So the first thing we'll do is you can open a regular Studio Clouds files uh, or point clouds, but I'm going to be importing a file here and you can see that they've given you a whole bunch of different types of file formats. I'm going to hit text file and I'm going to search for a uh, .txt. I have one here called wall2 and what I'm going to do is show you how to import. So what you need to do is select the uh, units and I'm just going to choose meters and also change the format here because my text file is XYZ RGB uh, these are not in order so if you just click on the uh, header here you can change these to red, green and blue and I'm going to hit import and I'm just going to choose the default now uh, here you see that it, it, you could choose uh, you could import every other point every 10 points if you're working with a massive point cloud and you want to reduce that somehow you have the option to do that but um, I'm just gonna import the full point cloud because I don't think it's very large I think it's just under a million points so once that's done you'll see I've got the uh, the point cloud here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit this uh, button here change seek point just click on the middle and you'll see that it just zooms into it um, it's, it's not a zoom but it's just so that I rotate around uh, whatever point that uh, that I've selected so I've got the point cloud in here and uh, I'm manipulating this point cloud by using uh, 3D Studio Max default controls. So rotate is Alt, middle button. Um, I can just hold down the middle mouse button uh, or the mouse wheel and click and drag. And uh, again, between the two, you can pretty much do uh, anything you want. So um, if you are a Maya user, you can change the options. Um, I believe it comes default with uh, Maya's uh, navigation settings, but I like 3D Studio Max and you can also choose to show the grid this is typically on by default I'm going to just keep it off and there's some other options here so you can choose to show less of the point clouds of you know if you only want to show 100 million points or 50 million points or whatever then you can adjust this number here uh, there's also a whole number of different settings that are very similar to studio clouds I won't get into them all uh, but we'll just leave it at that also, uh, some going across the top here. Just these are some of the file, uh, you know, file import type of uh, uh, functions that are up here. Uh, undo and redo. Also, increasing and decreasing the point cloud size. So I'm just going to leave it on or the minimum. And then you can choose different ways to view the point cloud. So you've got grayscale, you've got height ramps, you've got reflectance, RGB, and also stereo. So if you've got a a pair of uh, glasses, uh, 3D glasses, you can uh, throw those on and uh, have fun viewing this in 3D. The high ramp is actually quite interesting, but the high ramp is affected by the limit box, which is down here. Now, I'll, I'll shut that off and maybe I'll, I'll go back to RGB and I'll come back to that, but the limit box, if I click that, you'll see that I've got a, a limit box around here, and the limit box is, uh, in fact, just something you use to clip off. Uh, if I, You see, I'm just scaling it here. Um, to get rid of uh, anything that's outside the clip box. So if you have a very, very large point cloud, you want to focus in on a very small portion, you can move, rotate, and scale the clip box. And uh, I'm using shortcut keys here, but you can do the same things here. So you can translate. Uh, so if I click on translate, just click on the uh, length of the arrow here, and you can just move this across. You can also rotate. So you can rotate this around any axis, and you can also scale. So just click on the boxes here on the gizmo, and uh, you can do some different things there. Now, the um, I'm gonna here it says fit limit box, so I'm just gonna do that again. 
going back to the height ramp, if I click that now, you'll see that I actually have a better resolution or better resolution here because the height ramp is affected by the limit box. So now that I have it here, I can do some things. I can maybe rotate this around a bit to get it a little bit more even around my object. And I might even scale it down a bit like, like that. Let's see, without hopefully not clipping it off too much. Uh, something like that. And I will lift it up a little bit. Okay, so look at that. So now you can see that, you know, the, the part up here and the part at the bottom. Now this is not the scale, so um, just, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth here. So it's kind of interesting what you can do. I'm going to shut off the limit box and I am going to go back to RGB mode. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can select specific points and get their um, 3D coordinates. So if I go single pick and I just start picking points, you'll see that I can get... Uh, a, num uh, a bunch of 3D coordinate information uh, off of this uh, point cloud, which is quite nice. You can also hit Add Note and uh, click on a certain point, and I don't know, call this uh, stone or something like that. Hit OK, and now you've got a little note there, so if you wanted to package this and send it to somebody with these notes, you, you could do that as well. Uh, here I've got some default views, so you know, front, bottom, all that sort of thing, perspective. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the top, and then you've got orthographic view and perspective view. Uh, additionally, in the point cloud viewer, they've left the outliner and also the node properties. Uh, this is kind of nice. So basically, in the outliner, what you have is basically, a, a, it's, this is just a whole container for everything that's in your scene here. Uh, you have all the measurements that we've just done and also a note, and we also have the point cloud which is called wall 2 here. Now if you want to look at a little bit of the information that's inside here, you just click on the plus box and expand this. So I have uh, just under a million points, 924,758 points in this particular point cloud, uh, which is kind of informative. It also gives you the position, rotation, and scale of this particular point cloud in the 3D space or in the virtual space. One of the things you can do is if you click on wall 2, the node properties becomes active and what I can do is I can actually start changing the uh, position of this thing in here so I can click here and from point two maybe I'll go to point five and you'll see that my point cloud just jumped over and it also updated up here in the outliner another thing you can do is save this so you, if you want to you can save it in the uh, Alice Labs project file format and so um, you know I can just call this uh, uh, test file or something like that hit save you'll be able to open this up later on. In fact, I'll just do that now. I'll just hit New. Uh, I'll shut everything off here. File, Open. And you'll see I have Test File. Open that up, and I'm right back to my project. So this Point Cloud Viewer is a really nice offering from Alice Labs. Uh, great for importing point clouds of all different kinds of formats from different scanners. Great for viewing. Great for uh, inspecting and doing some different things with it. And uh, hey, I would say uh, uh, give it a shot and give it a go. Uh, it's a, a neat little program.